welcome back. Today we're here in the workshop again because, well, we're on lockdown and it's also blowing an absolute hoolie outside. It's a massive storm going on. So if I start to wibble and wobble or the tree crashes through my roof, you know what's happened. Today, I'm gonna show you how to clean a saddle. I've got a saddle in here that's a little bit moldy. So I'm gonna show you the best way to clean it, get that mold off and give it a really good thorough clean. So sit back, make yourself a cup of tea and hopefully, Enjoy. So I'm going to show you how to clean a saddle the way that I clean a saddle. Before we start, you must always follow your manufacturer's guidelines about how to clean your saddle. And that is because it really does vary according to what leather is used, etc, etc. So this is just a general guideline for a general saddle in a general kind of way. First of all, you need to get your stuff together. So here I have a bowl of hot water, a sponge, some saddle soap, some tack conditioner, a kind of a microfiber spongy thing for the conditioner, J cloth that's throwawayable in case we need that, um, a flannel which is only going to be used once and washed and a microfiber cloth thingamajiggity and I've also got one of these little noodle brushes this is one of the little hippo noodle mitt things but this bit's not essential that's just if you want to give it that little extra buff at the end and an old toothbrush and no I'm not going to be cleaning my teeth today I've already done that this morning you'd be pleased to hear I have to confess in lockdown I've perhaps been cleaning my teeth a little bit less than normal and brushing my hair a little bit less than normal but I can promise you that the toothbrush today is for the saddle not for my teeth and I'm not going to use it on my teeth once I've used it on the saddle so why hot water well number one I use hot water because it cuts through the grease much better if you've ever tried washing your hands with cold water versus washing them in hot water you'll know you do get much cleaner hands with hot water same with when you wash your horse when you when you wash them with cold water yeah they can come up clean but when you wash them with hot water it really gets that grime from their skin off and let's face it it's that grime on their skin that ends up on your saddle most of the time is a sweat that we're getting off so hot water is much better for that also it's nicer on your hands you'll hear me say an awful lot throughout this video that i have really sensitive hands my job is awful for my hands i've got such sensitive skin and it means that i can't have chemicals and stuff on my skin hence the saddle soap and the conditioning balm i'm using today are um, ones that we make because they're all natural and they haven't got anything in them that's like skin skin irritant a lot of saddle soaps have that sls stuff in it that makes me go that makes my skin fall off basically where was i hot water the other thing about hot water is that it can really help with mold so this saddle we're going to do today has got that little bit of mold on it and the hot water can really help just kill off some of those mold pores we hope fingers crossed so one important thing to remember about mold on your saddle is once the leather has become moldy the chances are you're never going to get rid of it so we can do things like we can clean it we can put like mold inhibiting stuff on it so for example a lot of the balms like the one i'm using here has got like um has got like antibacterial and antifungal stuff in which can really help but actually once that leather has got the mold spores in it, it can be really tricky to get rid of them forever and ever so the best thing to do is please don't let your saddle get moldy. Mm -mm. The girl who owns this saddle got a telling off from me for having it a little bit moldy. So the reason that saddles go moldy is because they are stored incorrectly. So whilst I'm cleaning, I'll explain about storage and stuff. Where do we start? So we're obviously going to start with cleaning it. So before I start to clean it, what I don't want to do with saddles that have got a little bit of mold and they may have mold spores on that you can't even see. So it's best to do the step anyway. So step one, you're going to give the saddle a good wipe over with a very small amount of water and a flannel to or a cloth of some sort, even like a tea towel or a bit of kitchen roll or something that you're then going to wash straight away because you don't want to be using it again because it might have the mold spores on it. So the first thing you're going to do is wipe the saddle all over to get rid of those mold spores because you don't want to be cleaning the saddle and just rubbing those mold spores in. So let's try and get rid of many of the external ones as we can before we even start. Old flannel, hot water, let's go. This here is a saddle that we are doing today. Um, and you can see when you look at it from the outside it looks fairly clean actually. You can look for a bit of dirt in here. When you look up in here, can you see this here? That's a bit of mold in there, some mold on the front there, some mold down here. And the leather itself has got a little bit dry. So the leather is a bit dry and it needs a bit of love. What we don't want to happen is for these girth straps to start to crack or anything like that. 
because they've got, they've got dry. So we're going to give it a really good intensive moisturisation as well. I personally think, it's a bit like washing your face, I personally think that the moisturisation part of it is as important, if not more important, than the cleaning part of it. Obviously you don't want to have a filthy dirty saddle, but that dry leather is the worst thing to have. Remember leather is skin, you wouldn't want to have dry chapped skin all the time, would you? Because it cracks. You don't want your leather to crack, you want it to be beautiful and soft and mm, moist. Lovely and moist. You would normally do this like on your normal saddle stand, um, but I have a saddle bench in front of me. While she should set aside about half an hour to clean your tech properly, um, don't worry, I'm going to fast forward the little bit. First of all, you get your little flannelly type thing, you put it in the hot water. Now this is very important. You squeeze out as much water as you can. That's the other good thing about using hot water, is that when you squeeze it out, it tends to evaporate quicker, so you don't have such a wet flannel. Because what you don't want to be doing is using anything wet on your tack. Damp, moist. I can't think of any other words to describe it, but that's the feel you're going for, not wet. You shouldn't be able to get any water out of it. So we're going to give this a quick wipe over to get rid of any, like a surface dirt, but we're not doing this to clean it, we're just doing it to get rid of the surface dirt and maybe that little bit of mould that's on there. I tend to do the bits that I can see the mould on last because I don't want to be spreading the mould around. This is a bit with mould, so I'm doing this bit last. Now that's all done, we're going to move on to the actual cleaning. So for this, I use a sponge personally. My sponge is covered in flocking, annoyingly. So I use a sponge, and again, it's hot water. So hot enough, you can put your hand in it, and then you're going to squeeze every last drop out. And again, being hot water, it squeezes out and evaporates a little bit quicker. Then you're going to get your saddle soap. So like I mentioned earlier, I have really sensitive skin. So I use, I use our own saddle soap that we make because it's not got anything irritant in it for my hands. But I, use, I personally like these glycerin, so ours is a glycerin based, and there's lots of other glycerin based saddle soaps. The glycerin based ones tend to be, so like Cardane Martin do them, anything with glycerin in them really. And again, you want that little bit of dampness moisture in your sponge but not a lot, a bit of soap on there and then you start on your saddle and you start in circular motions. So we start off and we're rubbing it in, anywhere we see surface dirt we make sure we take that dirt off and that circular motion is what you're looking for and you don't want to leave any residue of soap behind so if you're leaving residue of soap behind you're using too much soap. You can get hard saddle soap and soft saddle soap. So our one is quite hard. I personally prefer the hard stuff because I find the soft stuff you can put too much on and you end up making it claggy and sticky. You really only want to use a little bit. You're not using the soap as something to put into the saddle. You're using the soap as something that's gonna break the grease up and take the dirt away. You don't want something really heavy that sits on the saddle. You just want something that helps you kind of break up that dirt. Now when you get up in here where the D-rings are, Make sure you move that D-ring out of the way, because a lot of people just clean around the D-ring. But if you clean around the D-ring that way, flip it up and over, and then clean this side of the D-ring too. Don't forget to do underneath your skirt here. No one wants a dirty underskirt. And make sure you get all the way back into the crease at the back of the skirt here. Now this is where I get my toothbrush and it's a really soft toothbrush. And that's really good for getting around like the maker's badge here. Really good if you've got a buildup of dirt here through that nail there, or around your D-ring. So that's the outside of that flap done. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the outside of the other flap. Outside of both flaps done. Now I'm going to do the seat. And again, same old, same old. So damp, very slightly damp. As much moisture out of the sponge that you can get. Squeeze it. And don't forget the back of the cantle and the front of the pommel. Again, if you've got any like dirt stuck here through what's called the front facing, you can get a little, you can get your little toothbrush out or you can even get like a bit of cloth and put your nail in it and just gently drag it through there. You just want to be careful that you don't scratch the leather. 
Now the whole top of the saddle has been done, it's time to flip it over. And we're going to do the underside. So I always do the underside before I do the flaps because you're much more likely to have the mould between the flaps. And what we don't want is to spread the mould around, do we? Even though we've wiped off the bits that we can see, there's still mould pores in that leather. And again, what do we do? We squeeze out all that moisture. Now you might be tempted to just keep reusing the sponge and not keep dipping in the water. That's a little bit like not rinsing when you're in the shower. You don't want to be just collecting dirt on the sponge and then rubbing it in. You want to wash it out because if you look in here, that saddle looked quite clean. But look how dirty the water is already from just doing the top. So we don't want to be just moving that dirt around. We want to actually get it out. Get out of my saddle. Hesky dirt. So some more saddle soap. And now we're going to do the panels. And again, circular motion. Don't forget the back of the gusset here and all that the nooks and crannies in there. I personally think it's very important to make sure you don't overwet this part of the saddle because this part of the saddle has the flocking underneath. You don't want to saturate the flocking. Bad enough it has to cope with all your horse's sweat, you don't want to be adding any more moisture in there. If anyone else got a husband like my husband, that every time you do anything and scratch your car he says that'll tea cut out. Well, my husband says that all the time. And it's a little bit like that with saddles. If you get a scratch on your saddle, like a scratch that you can see, sometimes just cleaning and conditioning it can give that leather enough softness that the scratch kind of just goes. Not always. So if you've got any areas with a scratch on, just give it a little bit of extra love. Because you never know, that little bit of extra love might be enough to get rid of a scratch. Um, so I'm also gonna go up and underneath the panel here a little bit. Not hugely, but just sometimes because you see how much dirt is collected, that's all just come out of there. So like dirt can really collect up in there. You don't want to go too far, really. you don't want to distort the shape of your panels. But there we go. Now I've done the bottom and I've done the top, and I just have the bit in the middle to do. So again, giving the sponge a good rinse off. Squeeze. Squeeze. Squeeze it out. Just going to use my little toothbrush in front of the knee block there because it's collecting a lot of hairs and dust. One of the most common areas that people miss when they clean their tack is here, the underside of their flap. On well, most saddles, the underside is a bit like a rougher leather, but actually that absorbs that absorbs product really nicely. So always do underneath your flap. Clean the tops of your flaps and the bottom of your flaps. You want to have nice clean flaps inside and out. And another fault on area is the edging. Make sure you clean all around the edging. And then last but most certainly not least is girth straps. I like to pull mine tight and rub them from top to bottom. And remember on the back. I know it's rough on the back, but on the back as well. And if you can see, but the colour has come out so nicely now. Can you see the difference in the colour? This one that I've just cleaned has got so much nicer brown to it now. And right up the top of the girth straps. And then all the way down. Now this is the part of the saddle that had all that mould on, do we remember? And in those situations, it's always definitely worth using saddle soap or saddle balm, or preferably both, that have like an antifungal ingredient. So it's anti so some of them are antifungal and like mould inhibitors, so it kind of discourages it from coming back. Nothing can guarantee it's going to stop it coming back, because like I said at the beginning, once you've got that mould in there, oh, you're a bit screwed really, you've got that mould in there, and you really, really, really need to make sure you don't get the mould in there in the first place. Right, we've given it a clean. Now what we do is we go and pop our kettle on and we have a cup of tea, and maybe even a cake, or biscuit, or Jaffa cake, or something like that. And then, what is a Jaffa cake? Cake or biscuit? Mm. So we have our cup of tea whilst we wait for it to dry. And then we come back and we give it some love, and some condition, and some moisture. And then we'll be good to go. So instead of having a cup of tea, I've just realised that I was going to tell you about storing your saddle. So that it is very, 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 very important that you store your tack correctly. The way tack needs to be stored is in a fairly cool, fairly dry place. And when I say cool, I don't mean cold. So like, you probably wouldn't want to live in it, but yeah, well I certainly wouldn't because my heating's on about 120 degrees the whole time. But so like cool, but not cold, but like cool and dry and like consistent. You want a consistent temperature because when temperatures go up and down and up and down, it's really bad for saddles. You absolutely 100% don't want to put it anywhere near a heater. 
because that dries the tack out. So knowing they're a radiator, please don't keep it in like a conservatory because they're the worst because they go super cold, super hot, super cold, super hot. So not near a heater, not in something where the temperature fluctuates and also somewhere where it's fairly dry. You know, you don't want too much moisture in the air because that can also lead to mold. It's also really helpful to keep a saddle cover on it all the time and um, to stop dust and stuff getting into it. How often should I clean my tack is what loads of people ask me. And I kind of disagree with a lot of saddle fitters on this because I hear a lot of people saying clean your tack every time you ride. I personally think that's the worst idea ever. So you have to bear in mind that we're all humans and we all have opinions and some people's opinions differ and doesn't make it better or worse. So I personally think that sometimes I see tack that is over cleaned and it goes like scuzzy and slimy and ugh, and I don't like that at all. So personally I think you clean it when, you, when it's dirty. This one was dual clean because it was starting to get moldy. She should have cleaned it a little bit before this in fact. So I think clean it regularly but not every time you ride and make sure that you don't overcoat it with product. So you can see here that we've, we can't see, but we've only used a, a little bit of saddle soap really because we haven't taken chunks of it out and therefore it hasn't left a film on the saddle. A film, film, film. It hasn't left a film on the saddle. So when we look at the saddle now, it's lovely and clean, but it's also smooth, you know, it's not sticky or tacky at all and it's that, and it's that tackiness that I see in saddles that's horrible. And it's just where they've let, put so much product on and left it on. So we've cleaned it, it's not tacky, it's nice and dry now. We're gonna give it a bit of love and a bit of TLC. And this, I believe, is more important than the cleaning part. So personally, I think people should make sure their tack is moisturized because I think of how much moisturizer I put on my old face and it's a lot and it's expensive and my husband complains. But, you know, I clean my face every day, obviously. Mm, most days. Yeah, some, I clean my face sometimes. Um, but I do really concentrate on keeping it moisturised because I work outside and it gets really dry and really cracked. So I've said this before, my hands crack and my skin hurts. And for me, putting moisturiser on is the key and oils and all that kind of lovely stuff. And saddles are leather and leather is skin so we do kind of I know that I know it's not living skin and it's not got collagen in it the same way that mine has and my expensive face creams have but it's still skin essentially and we still want to keep it moisturized so I like to moisturize my tack so we don't need the sponge or the water for this for this I use a cloth so I personally use a like a it's like an old microfiber slightly spongy one you can use pretty much anything and you want it to be dry you don't want to introduce any more moisture into it because you should get enough moisture from your actual balm. So this is like an intensive conditioning balm. Again, because of my stupid skin, it's all natural. This one is, smells like chocolate orange, very nice. You're going to do it in a similar way that you did the saddle soap. Small, circular motions. And just like the saddle soap, you're going to do the whole saddle, top and bottom, of everything so tops are flaps bottoms are flaps little creases little nooks and crannies try not to let it kind of clog up in the nooks and crannies so again slightly firmer ones like this were a little bit better than the really squidgy slushy ones because they don't clag up into all the holes quite so much if you do find they get a bit claggy in the stitching then you can get a toothpick and you just pick it out because what you don't want is something wet or damp or anything sort of sitting on the stitching because it can rot the stitching which is why i personally don't use leather oil very often so a lot of people, especially in the olden days, leather oil was the thing that we used, you know, we used neats for oil on everything. But nowadays there's so many more better products, I think. The problem with the neats for oil is that it kind of saturates everything. And you don't necessarily want a saturation, you just want a moisturization. So I'm not sure if you can see, but this is bringing it up lovely. And again, where there's those couple of little scratches, I'm just putting a little bit extra on to the scratched area. And if there's any kind of color fade, which can often happen with leather, then I'm just putting a little bit extra into there as well. And also down the bottom of the flap here, where there's a little bit of wear, a little bit extra, because dry leather wears much worse than moisturized leather. As for the saddle soap, we're gonna make sure that we go up underneath the flaps as well. So tops and bottoms of everything. And the girth straps, very important. Don't forget the girth straps. Again, circular motions or pull it tight and then up and down motion. And don't forget the back, the back of the straps. They, they soak up the moisture as well. Now let's compare the two straps I've just done. So can we see here, done this one 
I've not done this one. Can we see the colour difference? Yeah, it's, it's darker, but it's not darker, but stained the leather or dyed the leather. It's darker because suddenly that leather that was dry and dried and parched just <laughs> soaks up all that moisture. It also feels like much more supple and soft and like it's not going to crack, whereas that's a little bit tougher, a little bit more dry and a little bit kind of mm, scratchy. I've done this side, I'm just going to move on to the other. Probably doesn't quite show on camera, but you can see where I've put it. You can see that the leather is literally kind of glugging it up, like, oh, thank the Lord, I have moisture once again. A little bit like my skin after a hard day at work, and I come home and slather on my Elemis Pro Collagen serum, whatever it is I slather on. So questions that I often get asked, um, about saddles is people will often ask me should they oil their new saddle when they get their new saddle and the answer I always say is no and that's because a good quality saddle nowadays is made out of such good leather that it's got loads of its own natural oils in it that you don't actually need to oil it. Another question that I get asked a lot is people often, even with the new saddles, you'll pick it, you'll lift up your flap and you'll see the top of your girth strap has white bits on it and people panic like, oh my god, it's got mould on it. But actually sometimes it's the leather oil, it's the oil in the leather can kind of eke out and it looks like little white dots on there. That's often not mould, it can be the oil in the leather and in which case sometimes just heating up, a bit of friction even, um, or just soil saddle from a slightly warmer can help to sort of release the oil and sort of soften the oil and just let it soak back into the saddle again. I'd be interested to know what all you guys use on your tack. Whilst I'm obviously using the stuff that we make, there are loads of really good tack things on the market. I said, oops, my battery just died, but whilst my battery was dead, I finished off doing all of the um, conditioning and I've left it to dry for a few minutes. Now it's dried and it's all soaked in, I can give it a little bit of a buff up. So get a soft cloth, like I use a little white fibre one, or like I said before, these little wibbly ones are quite good as well. And you get a soft cloth and you literally just give it a little wipe over. And it just takes off any excess stuff that's left on there. Another one, another thing that's good for buffing are these little like, this is a cheap kitchen, I think they're called J cloths. Clean obviously and dry. Pumpkin's been chewing on this one whilst I've been doing this. But other than that it's dry. And you just give it a good buff over and it gives it a bit of shine. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this saddle is looking delicious. Delicious. It's clean, it's moisturised and it's buffed. So here we go, have a look at it now. It's looking good. The leather's nice and soft, nice and smooth. The earth straps are looking good. No gunk in the holes, which is always handy. Lovely, clean saddle with no mould anywhere to be seen. I get asked an awful lot about what products I recommend um, in terms of tack cleaning. I obviously use my own ones. Um, and would recommend them because I know what's in them and I know they're full of yummy things. But there's loads of products on the market. Personally, I like the harder style soap and I like the harder style balm. I don't like anything too claggy. You know, you end up kind of like scooping it out, getting like a scoop of it onto your sponge and then it gets clanked up everywhere and in all the seams and everything. Personally, I do like the glycerin-based saddle soaps. I think they do a good job of cleaning. And I also personally think as well that um, if I've cleaned tack and my hands afterwards, and like, like I've said it before, I, get, I have got sensitive skin, but like if I've cleaned tack and I get sore hands or my hands, you know, feel dry, then if it's making my hands dry, then it must be making that saddle leather dry. So I like things that after I've cleaned tack, I feel like I've put hand cream on. Um, that's what I kind of aim for. So you obviously want something that works well, ask recommendations, see what works, you know. It varies according to what kind of tack you're using, what kind of leather you have, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought I'd have a quick chat with you about the two-in-one products. So some of the products on the market are like a two-in-one, and they're, they can be really good because they're like a cleanser and a conditioner in one. However, I would say don't use them all the time because it's a little bit like, like a shampoo and conditioner on your hair. It kind of builds up a little bit and sometimes you just need to kind of strip it back and have like a really good cleansing session. So they're really good for using every now and again when you're in a rush. I do think that you should every now and again give your saddle a proper clean with a soap, let it dry, condition it. 
again like I said before not too much and try to use products that don't leave behind a residue you don't want your saddle ending up covered in sludge you've got to look after the leather and, and the better you look after it obviously the longer it will last and a good quality saddle and bridle will last you should last you with a lifetime really there are loads of products on the market, very popular, the Carday and Martin, so they do like a two-part one. They do a saddle soap and a conditioner, it's like a two-part, and they can come in a spray bottle or in like a solid one. Um, I will warn you that the spray bottles, once we had one, I think it was stage one, it was like the saddle soapy one, and it got clogged up and it wasn't working, so I kept pumping the spray and nothing came out and it was dead, and I kept pumping, and I could feel like the pressure building up inside. I was like, oh my God, what's happened? So I looked at it like that to see what was inside the hole, and it went boom and exploded and filled my eye with glycerin based tack cleaner and my whole eyeball was full of it i had to like literally peel it off my eyeball i thought i was going to go blind i am a drama queen but even my husband who's not a drama queen also thought i was going to go blind so don't spray yourself in the eye with it you mustn't do any of this stuff i've just spoken about on suede on the suede bits of saddles or indeed even like new buck which is that kind of really short suede um so if it's got like a furry feel to it and none of this applies, this video applies to that kind of smooth leather feel. And what about a synthetic tack? Because synthetic tack, so Wintex, Thumb Goods, those sorts of saddles, synthetic tack isn't clean in the same way that leather tack is because you don't need to use a leather cleaner on it. In fact, if you did use a leather cleaner, I think it'd go a bit horrible. The only thing I'll say in terms of synthetic saddles is the ones with the faux suede seats. So for example, the Thoroughgood T4s, they've got that looks like suede, but it's not seat, then use treat that like suede. Um, don't put any cleaner on it, but brush it like you would suede to get the fibres kind of brushed back up again. Don't brush too hard. Also, some synthetic saddles, just to confuse matters, have leather components, and some saddles are half synthetic and half leather so for example the thoroughgood t8 they have leather components so they have a leather seat and leather knee pads did you know that so you have to treat those like you would leather and you treat the rest of the saddle like wood synthetic confusing i know the saddle company do saddles that are half leather and half synthetic that's called their verona range and also their vicenza range now in those cases you need to treat the top which is leather as leather and the underneath which is synthetic as synthetic and then just to throw something else into the mix some saddles have surge panels so the bit that sits on the back of the horse is made of like a felt like material obviously you don't clean that like you would normal tack you can just brush that off or indeed even hoover it so there you go there i think i've covered all the different types of saddles if i've missed anything out at all then please pop a comment below in the comments box if the leather on your saddle has faded then we'll, um, then keep watching or subscribe or something and press the notification bell because i'm going to be doing a video over the next few days about how to restore that colour in the saddle. I'm going to give you a few little top tips and little tricks of the trade so that you at home can do it yourself because what you don't want to do is go on the internet and buy leather dye and dye it because nine times out of ten that goes really, really, really wrong. You can get lots of dye like liquid dye I've got here or powdered dye. There's loads of different types of dye but they are really, really pigmented so when you put them on your saddle you can make the whole thing just look a little bit like, jeez, that's black, like too much. Um, and it can come off in your job as an all sorts. So keep your eyes peeled if that is something you're suffering from because I will be doing a video about that over lockdown over the next few days forward slash weeks at some point. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please, please, please ask as many questions as you like below because I'm stuck here on lockdown in my shed. I'm not really in my shed. I'm in my house mainly, but I come in my shed quite a lot and I can answer questions from my house anyway. So please, if you've got any questions and ask away, whether it's to do with saddle cleaning, tack cleaning, anything like that, any of the products I've mentioned or anything like that, then please, please ask away in the comment box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you can too, it would mean the world. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and you're having an awesome day. In the UK here, we've got massive storms going on. So it's really windy out there and there's lots of rain and flooding, sadly. So I hope if you're in the UK, you're not too affected by the flooding. See you soon. In the meantime, take care and lots and lots of love.